I bowen to you all welcome to you all in another beautiful session that's going to be video number 3 of grade 11 general science chapter number 1 talking about living tissues completely we were talking about the simple permanent tissues which got same type of cells right single type of cells and now under that we saw there are t three divisions parent colon and sclerenchyma now we are here to talk about parenchyma tissue <laughs> Now, when you're looking the parenchyma cells under the microscope, it looks like this. It's very looking spongy, isn't it? When you look like this, it looks like a piece of regiform, isn't it? Okay. Now, let's understand that one further. The tissue that forms the soft parts, exactly. We were talking about the spongy look of that. Soft parts of the plant body is the parenchyma tissue this is the most abundant tissues found in the plant now somebody can ask a question which one is the most abundant tissue found in the plant so that you have to at a, a fraction of a time you have to answer that it's parenchyma tissue it is what parenchyma tissues wonderful now features of the parenchyma tissue is the one what we are going to see next let's understand that one parenchyma tissue consists of living cells which got the parenchyma tissue is got some living cells it's not dead cells it's it got living cells that's the most important thing that it has a life okay now the second one cells are isodiametric spherical with a large central vacuole you see that one this particular region they are going to talk about that vacuole that i am pointing it with the red color pen large central vacuole is there when you see this one the vacuole area is huge it's like in this direction i'm drawing it so it is in a huge one and there is something a, a dot also there you see that dot okay so what is that dot is about we will talk about that one in our next next slide okay now you understood what exactly is that now nucleus is present that dot is what you call the nucleus okay nucleus is present peripherally in this cytoplasm okay this cytoplasm is a very important one for the plant you will understand that one after some time so nucleus is present peripherally in the cytoplasm also vacuole is now clear and nucleus also clear the cell wall is thin and made up of cellulose cellulose is one another thing see thin primary cellulose walls are there these are walls over there so we came to know nucleus vacuole and thin primary cellulose wall isn't it okay and after that intercellular spaces are present you can see there are space in between you see that this particular region got space in between there are space you see this all right so when you are cutting cross you can see exactly there is space even here in this way when we are talking about the cross section also there are spaces that i am pointing with the, the red color pen very carefully you see that okay those are spaces so in cellular spaces are present there now let's understand the locations of the parent command tissues shall we okay locations of the parent command tissues are here itself cortex and the pith of the plant stem when you are taking a plant like this okay this is the then you are cross cutting this one when you are cross cutting this one and this particular picture is rising okay now we have taken the cross cut piece okay now in this you see this part this particular region there is there is in pith and in the cortex you can find cortex and pith the parent kumar tissue see this is all green color light green and the dark green those are living green color soft part you can just you know put your nail and feel it you can put your nail and feel it that it is there all right now we understood it and also pith and cortex of the roots also now when you're talking about a plant plant grows like this and if you're cutting this is the soil 
minding you and even the root has root has this pith and cortex of the roots also you find parenchyma tissues now it's very interesting locations of the parenchyma tissues the next one is fleshy parts of the fruit so you eat that fleshy part of the fruit and you eat the parenchyma tissue by the way okay so this is a, a, a butter fruit one and the flesh got 65 percent of the flesh over there not the skin or not the stone all right so that particular fleshy parts of the fruit got parenchyma tissue also you everybody know that you are eating corn so seeds endosperms also in that space it's pointed out very clearly over here you can find parenchyma tissues in endosperm you find the parenchyma tissue also look very closely the leaves they have taken a leaf like that and they have put under the microscope and this is the leaf and it shows very clearly now leaves has mesophylls see they got Helicid mesophyll and spongy mesophyll. In that part also, you find what? Parenchyma tissues. Now, fine, we understood the locations of the parenchyma tissues and now we are going to understand the functions of the parenchyma tissues. All right. So, functions of the parenchyma tissues is the first function is about photosynthesis. You heard about palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll, don't you? It's over here. Now, palisade and spongy mesophylls in plant leaves contain what? Chlorophyll within chloroplast. It got chlorophyll within chloroplast. Now, you know that the plant needs sunlight to for the photosynthesis, but without this particular section, spongy mesophyll and pellicid mesophyll and the, the parenchyma things, it won't make food for you. So, photosynthesis takes place within this chloroplast, within this what? Chloroplast, in which the parenchyma is there parenchyma tissues i mind you the food storage food is stored in some parenchyma tissues and they are called the storage tissues all right let's see that one the banana you find parenchyma tissues and the sweet potato roots definitely and also the potato tuber and also the carrot and finally the papaw what you eat got the parenchyma tissues now storage of water plants like these especially xerophytic plants they call it as xerophytic plants over there this is a new word that you're learning right water in parenchyma tissue hello leaves bryphalum leaves cactus cladod okay cactus looks like this okay these are got water in it it contains water so these are called xerophytic plants okay they can ask a question what is which one is the xerophytic plants or in it and uh, they can give you four leaves four plant names and you definitely know aloe leaves bryphylum leaves and cactus cladoed got the water in it and it's got xerophytic plants okay now the next one is a very important one habaceous plants like blossom absorb water into vesicles of sorry vacuoles of the parenchyma cells habaceous plants like balsam absorb water into vacuoles of the parenchyma cells thereby cells become rigid cells become turgid and provide mechanical support to the plant that is also an interesting point so when this is taking the water it becomes rigid and it gives a mechanical support it stands up and stay because of that parenchyma tissue so we came to know the type of the parenchyma tissues today and the features of the parenchyma tissues locations of the parenchyma tissues without any doubt the functions of parenchyma tissue those were very interesting isn't it if you uh, haven't understood the video again just look once again once again and once again and keep following us and keep learning with us good luck to you all and take care of yourself <laughs>